One thing I'm not a fan of is the way the media tends to portray the tech industry. It's an industry that's very hostile towards women and minorities, and unless you look like a white programmer, it's just an industry you're not going to make it in, which I think is completely untrue. So today I want to talk about this article I saw on Wired, an opinion article titled, How to Buck the Programmer Culture and Get Women into STEM. And in this article, I think she unintentionally actually makes cases against her own argument. But she starts off by saying, My mom doesn't believe in the impossible. A Chinese immigrant and physics teacher, she arrived in the U.S. with big dreams and limited English. During her first six months in the country, she would visit English-speaking friends to help her write checks. And when she got tired of that, she enrolled in an English class from 7 to 9 a.m. before working a 12-hour day as a waitress. Today, she owns two thriving businesses with my dad. Now, this isn't the main point of her article, but this still brings up a point worth addressing, and that is the racial disparities within the industry. Because people on the tech left have created a new term to hide reality, and that term is underrepresented minority. An underrepresented minority basically means every minority except for Asians. And shocking, right? Because as most people know, Asians are very well represented within tech. But they don't want to address this fact. They don't even want to look into why because it deals with races and they don't want to accept that there might be differences between cultures. So instead, they just come up with a term like underrepresented minorities, shove Asians to the side and hope nobody asks why. But here we actually have a pretty good reason why. She has a Chinese immigrant mother who knew little to no English, yet she believed nothing was impossible. She worked a 12-hour shift, and before she worked that 12-hour shift, she took classes in English. She hustled and got shit done. She didn't teach her daughter about terms like white privilege and, you know, if you're not getting results in life, that's because the white man has more than you. No, she realized the opportunity she had in America, and she worked and got it done. This isn't a coincidence either. If you look at small businesses, a large number of them are started by first-generation immigrants. Meanwhile, all of America is bitching about wealth inequality and their privilege and their privilege and their privilege when immigrants are just working. And what a surprise. Work leads to results, like two businesses. So if you want to know why racial disparities exist within tech, this is probably a good reason why. Being daring worked out for me as it did for my mom. Now reflecting on my career in the wake of the ongoing important discussions about gender imbalance in tech, I believe there are four groups critical to bucking the programmer culture and encouraging women in STEM. First are local governments. The tech industry talks a lot about supporting female engineers at the national level, but some of the most important work is and should be done locally. Girls need a low-cost, low-pressure space to play and experiment with code if they are to develop an interest in programming. Like your house? Look, instead of typing in Netflix or Facebook into your web browser, instead type how to program or learn to code. That's how I taught myself how to program. And if you're going to rely on local events or local communities, you're restricting yourself quite a bit. One, you have to hope that there's somebody good enough locally to teach you how to program. But why not go online where you have access to anybody and everybody and the best possible resources ever? Coding boot camps are great, but they often require substantial commitments of time and money. Money, sure, but learning anything requires a substantial commitment of time. That's exactly why people don't learn new things. They get into it, realize it's going to take a lot of time and effort, and they give up. Third are companies. Firms can start with fostering a diverse and inclusive workplace for all genders, races, and colors. No self-respecting and capable woman wants to be treated or paid like a second-class citizen. Such treatment sometimes leads female engineers to leave the field entirely. Companies should give women the opportunity to lead from day one. This means creating programs that tell women, we want and expect you to take the lead one day, and sending female staffers to leadership trainings and conferences. Pick one. You either want to be treated like everybody else, or you want companies to selectively tell women to do their job. And look, if you have to tell somebody to be a leader... They're not a leader. Fourth are engineering managers. Women now represent 47% of the U.S. workforce, but only 12% of computer scientists are women. At One Door, where I work, women make up 27% of the engineering team, and good software engineering managers are one reason why. I've had managers who took the time to help me when I didn't understand a programming concept or a piece of complex code. 
I've been encouraged to vent, to complain, and to celebrate, and have never felt discriminated against because of my gender or race. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> A word of advice here. Be careful, or the women in the industry who are trying to create this narrative will be on your ass. So you're already kind of in dangerous territory because you're Asian and you're a minority, but you're not really a minority because Asians are well represented within tech. But you also say things like, I've never experienced discrimination because of my gender or race. So combine a statement like that with the fact that you're Asian, and it might not be long before they label you as one of the self-hating cool girls. My advice to women who want to break into STEM, be authentic and believe in yourself. Yes, exactly. Believe in yourself. Have some confidence. It's so obvious when somebody isn't confident. You can see it in the way they sit, the way they walk. They're slouched over. They look at the floor. It's so obvious. So if you have this loop running in your head, nobody thinks you're smart because you're a woman. Nobody thinks you're smart because you're a woman. Nobody thinks you're smart because you're a woman. It's going to be really hard to be confident. So whether you're a man or a woman, be confident in yourself and stop waiting for somebody else to give you permission to speak or lead.